Right. Next up is the Hoffman and the Curtis rearrangement. Um, and if you feel like this kind of stuff is um, out of place, um, you can read this little article that I copy pasted into here. I think it's pretty funny. Um, anyways, let's go ahead and check it out. Uh, they essentially do the same thing. We're going to form an isocyanate intermediate, um, which can then be turned into an amine. But let's go ahead and check it out. Um, so the Curtis is basically an acyl azide. So it's kind of like an amide, except with an N3 instead of an NH2. And the way that you can form that is relatively easy, right? You just take an acid chloride and add some sodium azide to it. The other way to do this is through the Hoffman rearrangement. And this one starts at an amide. You add some Br2. and some NaOH, and you'll form an isocyanate, which is this guy right here. And then think about um, where your carbons here are. So if we number this as carbon number one, number two, number three, this right here is actually number three over here, and then two and one. So we've had some kind of rearrangement occur, as you can see here. The azide will also go to this isocyanate just upon the application of heat. And then once you've got this isocyanate, you can just add some water and you're going to lose carbon dioxide. And you'll form an amine. In this case, um, this would be car um, carbons number one and two from our previous structure. So note that this is a rearrangement and you're losing carbon dioxide. So you're going to lose one of the carbons. And again, this is the isocyanate. And that's the intermediate in both of these reactions. Uh, let's take a look at how we're going to form this isocyanate. The full um, mechanism can be found in the work along. So for the Hoffman, you've got your amide. Going to add some base, some sodium hydroxide, and some Br2. The sodium hydroxide is just going to deprotonate your amide, and then it's going to attack the Br. So now we'll have a bromine on here. And then if we number these as number one, number two, number three, here's the kind of key step, the um, rearrangement. The carbon 2-3 bond is going to break, attach itself to the nitrogen, and then the bromine is going to act as a leaving group and leave. So now our nitrogen is going to be attached to carbon number two. It's still attached to a hydrogen, and it's still attached to the carbonyl. The carbonyl lost a bond, but it didn't gain any electrons, so it now has a positive charge. And then some hydroxide can come in, deprotonate and that'll form your isocyanate intermediate. Courteous rearrangement essentially just does the same thing. We've got our azide here. or at least a resonance structure of your azide. And then we've got carbons number one, number two, number three. The carbon two, three bond is gonna break, attack this nitrogen. And then this right here is just going to leave as N2. So you're gonna lose nitrogen gas. And that's the same thing that's happening in the Hoffman rearrangement, except our leaving group is bromine. So basically, you're just attaching a good leaving group there. And then you think about what these carbons are. This one's number one. This one's number two. And then we're at a resonance structure, right? So we can just take this negative charge, make it a double bond, and you've got your isocyanate. So either way, they're just going to rearrange the isocyanate. And then once you've got the isocyanate, It's a very good electrophile. 
right? The central carbon is attached, doubly bonded to two uh, electronegative atoms. And so we can do different stuff with it. We're just gonna attack it with water. And then have some proton transfers occur. So we're gonna put an H on this nitrogen. And then we're gonna rearrange the water to make it a regular carboxylic acid. Then have some more proton transfers occur. Remember that our amine is more basic than our carboxylic acid. So it's gonna pick up that H plus. And then we're gonna have O minus over here. And then this negative charge forms a pi bond. And then this carbon nitrogen bond breaks. If you think about the part that's falling off the molecule, it's just carbon dioxide being released as a gas. And then you have your amine. So the overall reaction is um, just basically turning either um, an acyl azide or an amide, getting rid of that carbon that's doubly bonded to the oxygen, and then relieving it down to an amine. All right, so either this or this. ends up being this, right? Where if you can number this one, two, three, right? Note I'm numbering it the opposite way. This will be two and three, and then this will be number one, right? That carbon number one is now gone. <laughs>